right, so we're going to go ahead now and get started. And we're going to begin with our questions out of 2.1. And we're going to begin with question number two. And these are solving equations. So when we solve these equations, they have an equal sign. Remember, that is the difference between an equation and an expression. Some of these we may have to clear the fractions. Some of these we may have to use our distributive property. So question two, we're going to have to use our distributive property. So for question two, what we've got is we've got three times k minus one, or sorry, k minus six there, minus parentheses, 2k minus five, equals 7. So remember the order of operations. Now what do we always need to do first? Parentheses always go first, right? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to clear out our parentheses. Now remember the, the parentheses tell us where to stop when we use our distributive property. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 3 through. Now, where do I stop multiplying by the 3? At the 6. Okay, you don't go any further than that. So it's just going through each part. And then the next one has a negative in front. And what happens with that? Okay, when I distribute that negative through, that is going to change my signs, won't it? So let's write out what we've got now. So we've got 3 times k. So that is 3k. We've got 3 times a negative 6, that's a negative 18. Now, when I distribute this negative through, that gives you now a minus 2k. Negative and negative makes it a positive 5, and that equals now what? 7. Okay, so all we did there was we distributed through. Now, what do we need to do after this? Well, after we do this, we need to now combine like terms. So let's look at our k's and let's see what we can combine together. We have a 3k and a minus 2k. So 3k minus 2k, that leaves you with a single k. And then we've got minus 18 and a 5. Minus 18 plus 5, that's a minus 13. And what does that equal? That still equals 7. So let's review what we did. We distributed our 3 through, and we distributed our negative sign through. Then we combined like terms on the left. And now what are we going to do? Okay, what's my next step? Does anyone know? Yep, we need, to, we need to get the k by itself, right? So that means that 13 needs to go to the other side. And how do I get rid of a negative 13? What's the opposite of a negative 13? Positive 13. So I'm going to add 13 to each side. And that now leaves you with your answer, which is k equaling now what? 20. I want to write with that so far. So distribute through, then you combine, and then the last thing you do is solve it by moving pieces over. Question four. Question four has fractions, and we can either work with the fractions, or we can clear the fractions out. This one, I think, will work with the fractions. Because these can go together. So, what we first want to do is we want to look at each side and see if we can combine anything together. So, we look at the left side. Can those two go together? No, they're different. But what about the right-hand side over here? Those two can go together, can't they? 
right? Now, what do you notice about these fractions? Do they have the same denominator? Yeah. So those can go together, and that's going to make it now, I'm going to write the, the x first, so that's going to make it a minus one-third x, and then we've got, these are common denominator of 3, and 8 plus 8 makes it a 16. Okay, is everyone okay with that so far? Right, so we just combine those together. These have the same denominator, right? So that means they add together. If they didn't, we would have to do something else. But in this case, they have the same denominator. Now, what do I need to do next? Well, I always start with my variables. And what do I want? I want the variables on the left-hand side. So how do I move that one-third over. Right now it's a negative one-third, so what undoes a negative one-third? Positive one-third, so I'm going to add a positive one-third x to each side, and then we've got two-thirds and one-third, that makes it, okay, yep, one, and if you need to, you can always write them out over to the side. Okay, those go together, that makes it 3 thirds x, which is just simply a what? Simply an x there. Then we still have the plus 1, and that equals 16 over 3. Right? So all I did was I moved that 1 third x over. Okay? Now what do I need to do? What's my ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is going to be get the x by itself on the left hand side. So what do I need to do with that one? It needs to be moved over. Right now it's a positive one, so how do I get rid of it? It's a negative one. And if we need to, we can write the fractions over to the side. So I've got 16 thirds minus one. Now I want to get these together same denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one by a what? 3 over 3, right? So that'll make it work. Then I've got 16 over 3 minus 3 over 3, that's my 1. Then I've got 16 minus 3, which is a 13 over what? 3. So that gives me then my final answer, which is then 13 over 3 for x. And we could have cleared the fractions out. That would have been another option. But these already had the same denominator, so I chose just to put them together. Okay? I do what now? Um, right. It won't be negative. Now, why is it not going to be negative? Let's check our signs. When we put these together, I have a 16 and I have a negative 3, right? Which one's larger, 16 or the, or the 3? Okay, and what's the sign of that 16? So that means when you put them together, my sign is going to be positive, right? Does that make sense on that one? Always look at that and see which one is larger, and that tells you what the sign will be. Okay. So that's question 4. We ask about a few others. So now we're going to look at, at question five. And once we do more of these, it'll become easier. Now, question five, the only difference is it has decimals. And when we have decimals, we just use our calculator. So I'm going to write these down here. Minus 2.7x and a minus 3.3. .3. So this is what we've got. Now, before we move anything across the equal bar, we look at the left-hand side and we look at the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have a 3.8x, right? And a minus 6.5x. So those can go together. So let's go ahead and just use your calculator if you need to. 
And we'll put those together. And I'll even put it up on the screen so you can see what we've got here. That's kind of hard to see. Okay, but what are we going to do? We're going to put those together. So we've got 3.8 minus 6.5, and that comes out to be a minus 2.7, right? So that's the x component. So we put those together and we got to this point. Now, what do you notice here? Before we go any further, these are exactly the same, right? And it would be an identity, wouldn't it? And what's your solution set? All real numbers. Remember, we covered the three types. We covered conditional, which means you get a solution. We covered identity, where they are the same. Think of identical twins. And then we covered the contradiction, which is a false statement. That one came out to be exactly the same. So that would make it an identity. Right? Remember that? Okay. And if the sides are the same, exactly the same, then it's an identity. And its solution is going to be what? It's going to be all real numbers. Question 6. What are we going to be doing in question 6? We're going to be using our distributive property. So we're going to be using our distributive property. Now, in some cases, you may have parentheses that are not really needed. So I'm going to begin by distributing the 2 through. Right? And where do I stop? With the parentheses. Distribute the 7 through. I stop again at the parentheses. Do I even need these over here? No. There's nothing in front. Right? You can put a 1 there if you want. But we really don't need them because there's nothing in front. We have our equal bar here. So those parentheses here are not really needed. Okay, because there's nothing in front of it. So that's going to be 32 plus now 44x. It's going to be on the right-hand side because we don't need these parentheses because there's no number in front. Now let's work on the left-hand side. And what do we have on the left-hand side here? Okay. On the left-hand side, we have 2 times 4. That makes it an 8x. 2 times a negative 2. That makes it a minus 4. And then we've got 7 times a negative 3. That makes it a minus 21. And then we've got 7 times 5. That makes it 35. And don't forget your x there. So the key takeaway was, in some cases, if there's nothing in front of it, you don't need to use the parentheses at all, right? So on the right-hand side, these parentheses are not really needed. If there's a number or a negative symbol in front, you distribute or push it through. What's my next step now? Next step, I look at the left-hand side. Can I put some things together? Yes. I have an 8 and a 35x. So those can go together. And that's going to make that a 43x, isn't it? Right? So that, yep, 8 plus 35. That makes it now my 43x. What about the numbers? Okay, we've got, and be careful with our signs here, minus 4, minus 21. So what's that going to be? Minus 25, right? Be very, very careful with your signs. Right. So now, what do we need to do from here? 
Well, my ultimate goal is to do what? Is to get the variable, right, on the left. Everything else goes to the right. So I always like to start with the variable. So that 44x, that's positive. So let's get rid of it by moving it over. So we're going to use a minus 44x there. Then we've got 43x minus 44x. That leaves you with a negative x, doesn't it? Right? Because 44 is larger and its sign is negative. And then we've got a minus 25. And that equals a 32. What's my next step going to be? Okay. I'm going to add my 25 to each side. These are going to be then added together. And that leaves you with negative x equaling. You've got 32 plus your 25. That's a what? 57. Now, do we want a negative x? No. How do I make that negative x a positive x? Yep. Divide or multiply by a negative 1. What does that then do? That rewrites it. Negative and negative. That makes it a positive x. Positive 57 divided by a negative 1. Well, that makes it a what? Negative 57. There's your final answer on that. And the more of these we do, the easier they'll become. You're going to see these in this course. You're going to see them in intermediate. And you'll see them again in college algebra. All we do is we just add more each time. Question 7. And what I always recommend is take your time. Don't try to rush through these. So what I always like to do is I always like to look at the problem first and see how I would approach it. So when I see this question, first thing I notice is what do I have? Parentheses. All right. So those have to be dealt with first before anything else. So to deal with those, we draw our arrows. And that's where that stops. Same thing with the 5. So that's where that one stops with the parentheses. So then 4 times y, that's a 4y. 4 times 7 makes it a 28. 5 times y, that's a 5y. 5 times a negative 6, well that's a negative 30. Okay. So once I'm done with the parentheses, then what's my next step? Next step is I look at each side and I see if anything can go together. These on the left can't go together because they're unlike terms. This one has a y, this one does not. Same thing on the right. Those can't go together. So now I know I can begin moving things around. So the 5x needs to go and join the other side. It's a positive, or sorry, 5y. So it's a positive 5y. So how do I get rid of it? We use a minus 5y. And 4 minus 5, that makes it a minus 1. So that's a minus y. And then we have a plus 28. And that equals a negative 30. Next step. 28 needs to be moved to the other side. And that makes it a minus y. And these have the same sign, don't they? So they get added together. And that makes it then a negative 58. We are not done yet, though, are we? Nope. Why not? We have one more step that has to be a positive y. So how do we get rid of the negative? We divide by a negative. And then what's going to happen when we do that? Negative and negative makes it a positive y. Negative and negative makes it a positive 58. Okay, so everyone all right with that one so far?
So you kind of see what we did. Clear parentheses first, move everything. Then it has a, a variable to the left. Numbers go to the right. If, you're, if your variable is negative, how do you get rid of it? Divide by negative 1. Question 18. Sure, we can add 17 as well. Okay, so 17 is another question that involves decimals. Kind of like 5, we just use our calculator with these decimals. So let's look at question 17. We have a minus 0.111x minus 1 equals 0 0.889x there. Okay, so first thing we look at, do we have any parentheses? No, so that's done. Can I combine anything together on the left? Nope, nothing's on the right that can go together. So what do I need to do next? My next step is I get my variables to the left. So I'm going to move over the 0 0.889x. Use our calculator if we need to for these decimals. You can do it mentally or you can use a calculator. So we have a minus 0.111, right, and a minus 0.889. When you put those together, what do we get? We get a minus 1, don't we? So that's going to make that a minus x. And then we've got a minus 1. Now the other side, those went away, didn't they? So if they're gone, what does that leave it left? Zero. Okay, because those go away. So now on the right-hand side, we're left with a zero. What's my next step going to be? Add one. Now we've got minus x equals one. And how do we finish this? Divide by what? Negative one. And when we divide by a negative one, that leaves you with x equaling. Positive over negative leaves you with a negative 1. So my final answer there would be x equals now negative 1. Yes, you have to make sure yep, that your variable is positive. So how we do that is we divide by a negative 1. Okay? It can never, it can yep. never no, you never want it to be negative, and you don't want any number in front of it either, which is the next section. So it needs to be just the variable by itself. So no negatives are here at all. It has to be a positive variable on the left. So that's what we're doing. It's, it's kind of like a puzzle. What you do is just get the variable by itself on the left, and it has to be positive. Question 18 is the last one from this section. So question 18. Question 18 has fractions. And these fractions we can work with pretty easily. Now, we could clear the fractions, which we'll do in the next section, but we don't need to in this case. Why not? Because they're easy to work with because these already have the same denominators, don't they? Right? So we don't even have to clear them out. Nothing goes together on the left because these are separate. So I need to move that 3 fourths x to the left-hand side. Right now it's negative. So how do I get rid of it? Use a positive 3 fourths x. If we, if we struggle with how to work with the fractions, write them over to the side. We've got 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths x, and that gives you 4 fourths x, which is then what? 
1 or just a x. So that's going to come out to be an x minus 8. And what's on the other side now? Those canceled out. So that leaves you with a what? Zero. If it all goes away, then do those leave you with the zero? Now, what do you need to do next here? We need to get the x by itself. So how do I get rid of the negative 8? Add 8 to each side. And now we've got x equals 8. Are we done? Yes. How do we know we are completely finished? We have the variable by itself on the left-hand side, and it's positive, isn't it? So we know we are finished with that question. On these, we didn't have to divide at all. Now in 2, 2, we're going to be dividing, right? So we're going to be having to clear fractions or divide when, we, when needed. So 2.2 .2 is what we're going to look at next. Two point two, we're going to look at the first question. We've got one half s equals a negative one third. Okay, so how would I begin solving this one? Well, there's nothing I can move around, is there? Right? we can go ahead and clear out our fractions. What's the least common denominator of 2 and 3? The least common denominator of 2 and 3 is a 6. So now we're going to multiply everything by a 6. And that's going to clear out all of our fractions. Let's take a moment to talk about how we clear these out. So we multiply by the 6. What do we do? Divide by the number down below. Multiply by the number on the top. Numerator. So 6 divided by 2. Okay. 6 divided by 2 is a what? 3. 3 times 1 makes it a 3s. Then on the other one, we have a negative, so that comes down. 6 divided by 3, that's a 2, times a negative 1, that makes it a negative 2. So we cleared our fractions. Now, how does that 3 go with the s? It's not addition, is it? It's, it would be said 3 times s, right, or 3s. So what is the opposite of that multiplication? Division. So that 3 is linked to the s by multiplication. So to undo multiplication, we do division. So we're going to divide both sides by that 3. Those cancel. And so that now leaves you with s equaling, because those cancel, minus 2 thirds. So we cleared our fractions. And if there's a number left in front, what do we do? Divide by it. So if there's a number left in front of your variable, you just divide by it. So question 7. This one's a little bit more complicated because we're going to have to clear out several fractions. And you could combine these together and work with the fractions. However, I find that students are a lot better off clearing out the fractions. So, what's the least common denominator now? We'll do them in pieces of 7 and 14. 14. Then we look at the least common denominator of our 14 that we found and 21. Well, what would that be? Well, we, we start with our 21. Okay, remember how we do these. 
Does 21 evenly divide by 14? No. So then we double it. 21 times 2. What is that? 42. Does that evenly divide by 14? Yes. So what's my least common denominator? 42. So that 42 goes in front. How does this work from here? We divide by the number below, multiply by the number on the top. So, if we need to, we can use a, use a calculator just so you can see it. I'll just put it on the screen here so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so what do we do? We take our 42, right? Divide that by the 7. That comes out to be 6 times the 2 on the top. That then gives you what? 12. So that's going to be a 12x here. Next one, same procedure. What do we do? We take our 42, we divide it by our 14, multiply it by 1. What does that give you? 3x. Yep, don't forget the x there. And the very last piece, what's going to happen with it? We take our 42, we divide that by our 21. That gives you a 2. And then we multiply it by the 2 on top here. And that leaves you then with a yep, 4x. And here's where students make a mistake. Make sure it goes to the last piece also. So there's no fractions, but we still have to multiply. 38 times that 42. What does that then leave you with here? Okay, 1596. So that's what we've got, 1596. Make sure when you do that, it goes through every single part, not just the left or the right-hand side. It goes through every single piece. If it's that it has a whole number, you just multiply them together. Now, what do we need to do next? Before we divide or anything else, we look at the left-hand side. Can I combine these x's together? Yes, so always do that first. The very, very last thing that you do is divide. That's at the end. So let's go ahead and add these together. We've got 12, 3, and 4. So 12 and 3 makes it 15. 15 plus 4 makes it a 19x. And that equals your 1596. Now, what's my last step now? Divide by your 19. Let's see what we get for our value of x now. Mm -hmm. and these should come out evenly. So this comes out to be a positive 84. Is everyone okay with how I did that? Fractions are a little bit more difficult, and students always stress out over the fractions, but we're just going to get rid of them. Right, whenever we see fractions, you can always just get rid of them if you don't want to work with them. Question 12. Fractions, again, very, very similar. It just has different numbers in it. So question 12 is 2 sevenths x plus 3 over 14x plus 1 over 21x equals 23. All I did was change the numbers. So just like the previous one, I made the same problem just so you'd have repetition here. It's pretty easy to do. What are we going to multiply all of this by? Just like the last one. Yep, we're going to multiply it all by that same 42 again. So take your time. Don't ever rush through questions. If you rush through things, you'll make a mistake, and it'll cost you more time. So always just take your time. Don't ever try to rush through things. So we take our 42, 
We're going to divide that by our 7. That gives you the 6 times 2, then that makes it a 12x there, doesn't it? Okay, so there's that piece. What about the next one? 42, divide that by your 14. <clears throat> Excuse me, that gives you a 3 times the 3 on the top. That makes it a 9x. And then we've got 42. Divide that by 21. So 42 divide by 21. That's a 2 times the 1. That makes it a 2x. And where do students make the mistake? They forget to multiply the 23 by that 42. 23, multiply that by your 42, that gives you 966. That's where students make a mistake is right here. Most commonly made mistake is students will forget to distribute it through everywhere. Now we can combine all of our x's together on the left hand side because they are the same. So we have 12 and 9. 12 and 9 makes it 20, uh, 21, plus 2 more makes it a 23x, and that equals 966. What's our very, very last step here? Our very, very last step is going to be to do what? Divide. So we take our 966, we divide that by our 23. And look what that comes out to be, 42. And we know we did it correctly because it's a whole number. So we divide by their 23. And that leaves you now with x equaling, when we divided, 42. That was question 12. We've got a couple more that we'll work through. And then we'll take a break and we'll come back and look at that question 2 out of 2 five. So we'll do these, these first and then we'll come back and talk about question 2 out of 2 five. So that was 12. Let's look at 16. So three more of these we've got. 16. 20 out of 2, 2, and we've got question 2 out of 2, 3, and 4. So let's look now at, at question 16. And so this is what we've got on question 16. So what do we need to do here? Well, we need to clear our fractions, don't we? So the only fraction that we have is what? Is this 1 11? So we have an 11 down below. So I'm going to multiply all of it by 11. That's going to clear out my fractions. So 11 divided by 11. That leaves you with a 1. So that clears that out. And that leaves you with a single B. On the right hand side, what do we have? Well, on the right-hand side, right, we've got, because that has to be distributed through, we've got 11 times a minus 4.22, and that gives you now a minus 46.42. Are we done? Yes, that's it, right? Uh, here's what happens a lot of times. And I see it happen a lot in this course and, and intermediate and also even in college algebra is students think there's more to do. So you might be thinking, hey, this was pretty easy compared to the others. Am I really done? Yes, we are. How do we know we are done? We've got the variable on the left, right? Everything else and numbers are on the right. That's what we want. That's when we know we can be, we, we can stop and we're done. Yeah, number two, okay. Now, number two, there's really not much to do with question two, but we can look at that one also.
Okay, and we can even make it easier on question two. Now, what are we trying to do? What is our goal? Our goal is to get the x by itself, right? Right now it has a negative in front. How do I get rid of that negative? Multiply it by a negative. That's going to clear it out. We don't even have to worry about the fraction. Why not? Because when we distribute this negative through, negative and negative makes it a positive x, which is what we want. Negative and negative makes it a positive 1 7. That's it. We don't have to clear the fractions because if I multiply it all by a negative, what happens? That gives us what we want, right? So that's all we had to do. We could have multiplied it all by, uh, by a, a 7 and then divided by a negative 7 and you would get the same result, right? But when I look at this one, I see, okay, I don't need to worry about this fraction because this variable is all by itself. So let's use a negative to clear it out, make it positive, and then I'm done. And sometimes you can look at things and, and think about easier ways of solving them. We didn't have to clear the fractions because our ultimate goal is what? To get the variable x by itself. That's all we need to do. So that was 16, and we looked at 2 as well. Uh, the last one from this section is question 20. And it's similar as well. n over 2 equals 10. Well, what would we do here? We need to get the n by itself. So how do I get rid of that fraction? What am I going to have to multiply everything by? 2. So these 2's are going to directly cancel, and that leaves you with an n. And then we've got 2 times 10, and that is a what? 20. Are we finished now? Yes. How do we know we are finished? We have the variable by itself on the left-hand side. Now, we also ask about one more question out of 2, 3, and 4. Those are, these are put together. We asked about question number 2. And we can add more to these after we take a short break. So if you find some more out of 2, 3, and 4 that we need to look at, we can look at some more of them. Yeah, but this will get us to the point where we can take a short break. We'll come back. We'll do any more of these that we need to. And then we'll continue on looking at, at 2.5. So we've got a minus 0 0.346 times our 5,000 plus 0 0.5x equals 0 0.03 times 5,000 plus x. Okay. Now, a lot of times students make mistakes with these parentheses. This one gets distributed through, but what about this here? That, we're not distributing. What are we going to do? We're just going to be multiplying, right? Those go together, so let's multiply those together, and we'll use our calculator. We know our sign's going to be negative, okay? but we can go ahead and put this on the screen so you can see it. So we have a 0.346. We're going to make sure that's negative, so you put the negative in front if you want to. Or you can just keep the sign either way. We're going to multiply that by our 5,000. And that gives you a minus 1730. So that's that piece. And then we still have a plus 0.5x 
on the other side. We're going to distribute through, right? So we need that 5,000 times that 0 0.03, and that gives you 150. So there's that piece. So that's our 150 there. And then 0 0.03 times x, that's a 0 0.03x. So a lot of times students will try to take that 5,000 times that 0.5x. It doesn't work like that because there's no parentheses around it. These just go together with multiplication. Now, what are we trying to do? We are trying to get our variable x on the left. With the decimals, just be careful. We need to move that 0.03x over. So we use a negative to get rid of it. And that gives you a minus 1730. And then we'll put these together. If you need to, you can use a calculator. I'll put it up here just so you can see what we're doing. Right, so we have 0.5 minus 0 0.03. Okay, That comes out to be a positive, which it should be. Why is it positive? Because the 0.5 is bigger. Sign of it is positive. And that's a positive 0.47x. And that's going to equal 150. What's my next step now? We're going to go ahead now and add that 1730 to each side. So that's our next step. And what happens when I do that? Those go away. And now we've got 0.47x on the left, which is what we want. And then we've got 150 plus 1730, and that gives us 1880, and how do we finish it out? Okay, someone said it. We're going to divide both sides by what now? 0 0.47, and that leaves me with x equaling now, yep, should come out a nice even number. And that comes out to be 4,000. That is your final finished answer. We know we can stop because we have x by itself or the variable on the left, the numbers on the right, and that finishes it out. Okay. So let's take a short break. We'll come back and we'll do any more of these that we need to out of 2, 3, and 4. And then we'll look more at 2.5. So let's try to meet back here at around 9.05. So meet back here about 9.05.